Hello everybody and welcome once again to Pneumaticraft Repressure Eyes for Minecraft 116. Today we're going to have a look at, well, at least start with it, um, biofuel generation. But the first thing we're going to do is have a look at um, the pressurized spawner and again, because I got a few tips from a guy called Kiki Ra and Desht. So we'll start with that. So this tip's very interesting. This is one about putting um, a pressurized tube on an air grate. And on that you can then specify, if you right click it actually, it shows you the area it's covering. Covering, and you can also see um, an entity filter. So in this case, I'm excluding drones. I'm excluding players. We don't want to be pushed around again. And we're, up, but we're, in, we're also excluding endermen. So that will then make anything that spawns get pushed away from this trap here. So we don't hopefully end up with mostly endermen. Here's the pressurized spawner, and here you see the area. So right-click the skin, and it'll disappear like that. And you can see that that area disappears but that's the area that the things are blowing in and i removed drones because the drones are getting pushed over here so the other thing i was told i was actually wrote a list of them down here um you can actually use the spawner egg core as a mob i think it might still be in here yes it is i'm not sure this is going to work <laughs> i'm not sure which mob i'm going to get let's just try it anyway let's put it down here because i've set up this gun over here so we get sure enough we get a skeleton and you can see that skeleton is not coming anywhere near me, which is great because of the air grate pushing it away. So there we are. That's a good tip. Thank you very much for these tips, by the way. So also Dash tells me that it's when you see white puffs from here, it um, basically shows you that uh, mobs are not spawning. And in here I haven't got a mob spawner, but we could misfires, basically misfires from uh, mob spawning. So we can put a, a spawner a spawner core in here for example and then turn it on at the moment there's no pressure in here so we'd have to turn on the um generator as well so we turn on the generator that should start to increase pressure and temperature like that and this thing will needs at least 10 bar before it starts to to work so of course i could put it on but i think for the time being we saw that last time and if you be careful you saw the sort of white puffs of smoke which basically means it can't spawn something for whatever reason maybe the spawner core is empty or it's not completely full or maybe it can't find a place to spawn the mobs anyway so that's that now we're going to have a look at generating biofuel so the very first there's two steps to doing this let's have a look here i've got a wheat field set up not a wheat field uh a sweet um a sweet corn no what is it called sugarcane field set up um, and it's all ready to do let's just turn on the jetpack and have a look at this I think I've got to uh, make sure I'm not sure if I've got it in builder mode yes that's right so you can see here I've got the typical chest or the knight's piece layout for water here and I've put some um, glowstone blocks down here so it gives enough light for these things to generate so the knight's piece is two along and one across and you can see that all the way around here like this and that's how you actually get the optimal the optimal crop for this one and over here i have got another farm i've set up a wheat and potato farm over here these are divided down the diagonal and of course these things are getting put into this chest here like that so look at this so i've got a logistics frame here and i've got a logistics frame on top of this one these are basically providers and the and the drone should be pulling items out of here and then putting them into here like this so this is where it gets received so if we look here for a few seconds we may see something um being put in uh, there we go i just seen the one going off to get some um sugar cane and it should drop the sugar cane into here like this and when it does it disappears very quickly because of the speed upgrade and then goes into the system so we have a uh there we go like that so you've got eight of those or nine of those put in there like that. so then they actually get transmitted across over to those storage drawers over there so first things first let's have a look at how we do biofuel so we have biofuels, actually biodiesel. So we get 50 milli buckets of biodiesel from 25 vegetable oil and uh, 25 ethanol. Now vegetable oil, let's have a look at the recipe for that one. You get by um, either crushing seeds or vegetables, and then you'll get 20 milligrams for vegetable oil and that, and 50 milligrams from seeds, and that will produce that one. Let's go back again and have a look at ethanol. 
Ethanol is made with yeast culture and um, vegetables, by the looks of it, I think just vegetables, and sugar. Now, sugar's the important one here. That's why we've got the um, sugar cane farm. Uh, and yeast culture, so look at how that's made. That's basically made with water and mushrooms. Uh, well, well, one bucket of water, one mushroom will produce 250 millibuckets of yeast culture. That's one way to do it. In fact, that's the start way of doing it. And then in world generation, you can put a sugar into yeast culture and water, and it will make two buckets of yeast. And it does that fairly quickly, so I'll have a look at that first, I think. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to make some um, yeast culture. So the first we need, we need to make a starter's worth. So I've got already connected up here. I've got a thermonumatic processing plant. And what we need to put in here is four mushrooms and four buckets of water. But it also needs a temperature. So let's go and get some water um, and put that into here. In fact, then we can see what we need. We have, these four buckets will make one bucket of starter. And that's all you actually need. So let's put these into there. That's one and two. Let's go and get two more. And the, th and the fourth one is like this. So in here, now we should see a temperature requirement. So now it tells us it's got a temperature requirement between 30 degrees and 60 degrees. Now we could, of course, put this in the nether. That would work, because that's 54 degrees constantly. Or we can actually put it up in here. And one way to heat it is actually with a torch. So let's put a torch on top of this, like onto the underneath this, like this. The torch is nice because it's slow, and then you see this temperature will slowly increase, and it might have enough to actually produce f one bucket of, um, it's got plenty of pressure as you can see, one bucket of yeast. So one of, each one of these makes a quarter of a bucket, so the whole lot should make that, should make four buckets, let's have a look. 29 degrees as soon as it goes green, and you see that it's now telling as it's working as you can see from the smoke particles there are no problems because i've got enough insulation on here in fact the last block was the, the one underneath this in fact i could even make it go faster if i put in the speed up gray can we put speed up gray in here yes we can and that would make it go faster if it doesn't if it gets too hot which it will do over time we can take the torch out and let it just cool down a bit and put the torch back in again when it goes back up again so here we have now 250 millibuckets of yeast culture so wait a few seconds i'll come back in a second when it's all finished so we're on our last bucket now i've got a feeling that the temperature might get a little bit too hot it doesn't matter if we don't 30 to 60 degrees and it's 58 degrees now 59 degrees and if it goes up one more we'll just take out the the torch now it's gone red as you can see it hasn't actually it's not going back again so we just take the torch out like that and then it should carry on and hopefully with a bit of luck um we'll finish it off before the temperature drops down too much there we go so now we have one bucket of yeast culture so we can take that but yeast culture out of here like that and then come along here like this get that torch back again turn my magnet on if i can't reach it Turn it off again because otherwise I'll be pulling in crops and all sorts of stuff I don't want. This is just a liquid compressor and it's got in it, I'm not sure how much fuel it's got in it, let's have a look. Uh, it's got 716 millibuckets of kerosene which lasts quite a long time. So the next thing we want to do is we want to make this a little bit more. So the way you do this is you put one of these buckets of yeast culture in here like this. Get to the right place. That'll go across here like this and then in these hoppers, I've got a omnidirectional hopper with a dispenser upgrade, uh, a liquid hopper with a dispenser upgrade, and a another liquid hopper with a dispenser upgrade. So we need one bucket of water and we need some sugar. So let's just get, first of all, we'll demonstrate this. Get two buckets of water. I've got two buckets. I'll take two. Like this. And we put the bucket of water in here. So I have to get to the right position. I don't want to hit this bucket, otherwise it'll... Uh, this, this tank otherwise it'll put it in here like this so let's put that into there and before i do that i'm going to actually remove this um, dispenser upgrade because it's going to pull it out and push it out of here so we need a tank in its way so we put down a book uh, first of all we need some sugar let's get some sugar out i've got some sugar here we can put that in here like this i think we should be able to get it in there like uh now i have to throw it in can I throw it in? <laughs> I'm sure it's shift and Q. Yeah, okay, not in the right place, but let's go a bit nearer. 
no, nope, not doing it. But we can put it in here easily enough. Let's just put one of these into that. Then it will drop straight down into tubes. What happened there? Ah, oh, this is turned off. No, nope, it's not turned off. It needs a pulse. So what we can do here is we can put a button on this, like this, and press the button. And that should basically drop it into there. So this should now be empty. Like that, and it's empty. So the sugar's in there. So all we need to do now is put the water into here. Like this. And after a few seconds, this water will now turn into yeast culture, which we can extract with this. So I'll just go and get a small tank, and I'll be back in a second. Right, so I have a small tank. Let's just put, let's put the small tank on top of this like this. And then we should. I've also got a tank of water, which I'm going to put on top of here like this. Uh, so it should... Oops, missed, try to do that again. Which I quite often have difficulty doing that one. Let's try it from here. Maybe it's easier. Back a block. Right, good. So that's going to feed this Omni Hopper with a liquid hopper with with water. It should do. Uh, maybe I need to put a dispenser into here. I do need to put a dispenser in here to going down. Now uh, I need another dispenser upgrade. I've probably got some in this chest here. Yes, I have. Good. So what we want to do is we want to make this go down. And unfortunately, to go down, you have to go up. It's one of those features. Um, so if you shift right click this dispenser upgrade on here like that it says ejector down um which is what we want for the water to go down through here so let's just simply right click this and put that into there and now you can see this is auto read is dropped back and it's filling up this liquid hopper in here like that the liquid hopper is not going to it's got a dispenser and up upgrade in it but it's not going to fill in this water in here until this gets pulled out so all we need to do now is to put to pull this out all we need to do is put in this dispenser upgrade into this liquid hopper here and you'll see that it's taken that out of here and then should push this into this tank here now if it is not putting it if it's not uh, so it's ejecting to star which i think means it's doing all directions but maybe not let's just take this out of here like this and make sure it's going to go up so we right click it to go down like that so it goes up put that in here and that should unless it needs a pulse no I don't think it needs a pulse it should go up let's just check this have I got anything in upgrades oh I'll put the I put it in the wrong place no, where did I put that liquid hopper? Ah. Should be as oh, it's in here. Yes, that's right. So it should eject up. Okay. Um, mode. Ah, yes, of course. Very important. I need to leave one liter of uh, one bucket in here to filter. So now what we're going to do is we're going to come along here, fill this into with this, put the rest of this in here like that. And then we can come around here and press the button like that. And you should drop one off in here. And you see it's already got one yeast in here like that. Um, so it should have now one bucket of uh, liquid yeast culture. Press the button again. And you can see what it's doing. It's pulling it out, pushing some more in here. And then the water will also go in at the same time. Let's do that again. Like that. Now the next thing we can do is we can automate this with a clock. So here's a clock, and it's um basically it's just a redstone clock. Very simple. We could of course just do this with the drone, which would have gives a lot more control. But in this particular case, I'm going to just turn it on, and it's going to pulse around like that. And you'll see it pulses reasonably slowly, but this pulse here is very long. Now that's actually too long for what we want because if it does that it's going to drop into here probably most of the sugar cane uh, sugar into it so let's go and get out of this chest here a observer block now with an observer block it will give a pulse every time this thing actually comes on so if we right click this from this direction a wrong way around oh no yeah not actually right way around it's actually pulsing this as you can see i wonder if it pulses this there should be a um a drop of sugar out of here I hope like that and you can just see it working its way through and it's using and it's basically filling up this tank with yeast culture let me just come back over here so what if I did I have my magnet on 35 it doesn't seem to matter that much that it's actually not quite at the right frequency for this because you can see how long it takes but just the one pulse will pulse it each time um, 
and it's not dropping sugar in here which is great but this is slowly going up like this so now we've got 9.4 buckets in fact possibly I would need to put in speed upgrades if I want this to be faster okay good so that's how we're going to automate this for the time being this is sort of relatively early game stuff which we can do without having to have drones or plastic any involved so let that work away and then fill up this and we should end up with there's 32 buckets of water in here so we should end up with 32 buckets of yeast or at least 31 buckets of yeast because we've got um 32 buckets of water in here uh we've got enough sugar so that and this capacity of this is 32 but i might have used one up i'm not sure uh, for that maybe i just use a bucket so we probably get 32 in here hmm okay so now what do we do with this yeast culture we can then start to use this with sugar cane uh sugar into this processor here so we can actually feed this in here with yeast culture so let's have a look at yeast culture let's have a look at uses of that so we can take this with potatoes apples melons or um sugar and we can this will give us uh, ethanol but it needs a temperature up to between 30 and 60 degrees again so that's again it's really also much better to do this in the nether because it's 54 degrees in the nether so it's always going to run and you don't have to heat it up at all but for the time being we're going to have to use um, a torch and in fact I was planning to do that in here, but I've got a feeling I need to do the same with vegetable oil. So let's just have a look at that again. So the vegetable oil is, you sculpture vegetable oil is this one. Doesn't need any temperature. Right, okay, good. So I probably need to swap these around because I can easily feed this, reverse this around, feed it straight into here like this. Um, so we can have yeast coming in, yeast culture coming in here with some sugar on it. And then on the other side, we can do the opposite. Let me just set that up. And I'll be back in a second. So right, I'm back. So I've swapped the sides over, basically put the hole underneath here, and I've got the this one on the opposite side. So in here we can make vegetable oil. So for vegetable oil we need, let's have a look. What has for vegetable oil is this one. It's basically a seed plus just a bit of pressure should give us vegetable. So let's have see how this works. Um I've got in here, I've picked up some seeds because we've got plenty of seeds and as you can see this is now working away and it's going to produce vegetable oil like that. So each one of these is going to produce 20 millibuckets of vegetable oil. So that's going to go along here and there's few to fill up. On the other side of this we need to make ethanol. So ethanol we need for that one we need, now ethanol is East culture, let's have a look at the, the other way around, it's the grey one here isn't it? So we can do this with a potato, an apple, or a melon, which obviously potatoes is good, and sugar as the, other, as the fourth one, and that produces 50 millibuckets. So we'll put some sugar in here, like so I've got a stack of sugar in here like that. And then we just need to fill this with some uh, yeast culture. We've got this tank now full of yeast culture. Um, this is, I think, full. I'm just hoping it doesn't squirt out a whole lot of uh, ethanol when I, uh, this culture want to do this. It, in fact, it has done, which is not what I wanted it to do. So that's going to break stuff up. So I'm going to have to just pick it up with a bucket here like this. And that should disappear down like that. There's only one bucket's worth because the water's run out. And as you can see, it's uh, hopefully it's done enough of this. Yeah, I got rid of enough of it. <laughs> it's completely destroyed my my little clock here. Never mind. Um, it's not it's not too important. I could have bucketed it out of there. <laughs> anyway, so we need to remove the from the top of this one. We can remove um, this thermal thermal lagging. We could put the the tank on the top of this probably easiest way is to do it from this side like that and of course it's not going to go in here until it's got a dispenser upgrade into this so we need the dispenser upgrade going down so let's get the dispenser upgrade out of here i've actually got one here ready let's make sure this one goes down come to this tree here and right click it on that so that's now going down so we can then put this dispenser upgrade into here and then this is going to drop down as you can see and it's going to be fed into here so now with this plus this we've got enough pressure but we don't have enough temperature so we'll use the torch again 
And obviously it's gonna, I'm going to have to break and replace this torch all the time, which is not what I want to do. It's going to be a bit of a nuisance to do that. But first things first, let's get some made. And we should get some, let's have a look at that now. So we should get some processing done as soon as the temperature is hot enough. So now we've got 16 buckets of yeast culture in here. And the temperature is just about hot enough. Let's just check this, no problems as you can see. So now it's going to start producing ethanol. So we've got 50 milli buckets of ethanol here like that. So all we need to do now is to tell this, to give this processing plant uh, some more upgrades, because we need dispenser upgrades, and feed into the fluid mixer here. So let's, uh, this one's actually, no, it's still working away. Good. In fact, it's going to need quite a lot of seeds to make this, because you can see here we've got one and a half buckets of vegetable oil. And this one here, we should get about three buckets of vegetable oil in here. And we've still got 300 milli buckets of ethanol at the moment. But we have to watch the temperature. Now, I think I'll do that next time, but for this time we shall we want to make some um some biodiesel. And I'm from biodiesel can then fill up this thing, the tank over here when the kerosene runs out, and we can run it off biodiesel. So next thing we need is two more dispensers. Um that wrong one. Have I got two more? I have just got two more good. So one we need to just go to the left and the other one we need to go to the right. So let's just come along here and then right click this on this. Just, I'll have to shift right click it because otherwise we don't want the chest to open. Eject to south. Um, take one of those out of here like that. Because you can do the two together of course. We can then eject to north if we do this one like that. So now north is, I think it's this side. We'll soon find out. Let's put this into here. Let's eject to north. Is it going down? No, it's not. I want to eject to south. So we'll look. If I put the mini map on, um, I think I've changed that to Alt P. So that's the south direction. So we need to do the one that ejects the south, definitely. So that's this one. And you saw that went down very fast. So now we've got nothing in here, but we have got some in the fluid mixer. And this side here, we shall eject to north, and that should also go down as empty. So now we have got both of these two in here. I should be able to see what's going on in here. Yes, I can. So we've got our first drop of glycerol. glycerol. Uh, we've got vegetable oil and we've got 100 milli buckets of diesel, biodiesel. Fantastic. Um, this one here is great because with this stuff here, the drop of glycerol, let's look at the uses of those. We can make speed upgrades. In fact, we make twice as many speed upgrades for each lubricant bu bucket than we did with... Um, we look at this one recipe for this one we've got two methods we could use glycerol which gives us one or we can use sugar that gives us uh, sorry glycerol makes two and, and sugar makes one so we get for each bucket of this twice as many speed upgrades and speed upgrades are actually one of the hardest things to do on large quantities because it requires a lot of oil so that's great so we've already got nine of these and we've got, nearly got a bucket of uh, biodiesel so we shall wait till we get a bucket of biodiesel. In fact, it's no big deal. We can make another tank. Um, and we can then feed the tanks into here like this. In fact, I should do this anyway. So my mistake here was not to take this dispenser upgrade out. Um, let's go and do that. This should also have one bucket's worth. Of, oh, it's always empty. Ah, because it's... That's strange. It shouldn't have been empty. It should have left one milli bucket of... Um, yeast extract in here so right, I'll be back in a second with a tank and to put on top of here right I've got a tank and I've actually got another one of these so I should be able to right click that into here and have a look at that and we should keep that in there I'm not sure why it disappeared last time um, when the tank was removed so that should now be ready to automate again there's no more sugar in here but let's have a look at how much a biodiesel we've got so we have actually got our first bucket of biodiesel. Fantastic. Like this. I'll probably get an achievement for that. Less bad for the environment. <laughs> Very good. Um, so the other thing we can do with uh, yeast extract, so look at this one, is we can make sourdough for yeast extract, uses of that one. Um, that's the recipe, I think. Let's try the uses of it. What did I do wrong here? 
We should be able to make sourdough. Where is it now? Sourdough is this one here. All right, so around a bucket of um, yeast we just put wheat flour. Wheat flour is made, the recipe for this, is made by explosion crafting or in a pressure chamber. We put one wheat, it'll give us three of those. Right, so I shall go and get some wheat. I've got plenty of that, and we should also put that into the pressure chamber and finish off with some nice food. So in this chest here, we've got plenty of wheat. Let's take one stack of that out of here. Um, obviously, the logistics drone doesn't reach this one. I'll have to put down another logistics drone, or we shall program a drone, and I think we'll probably do that for next time. And the reason I haven't built this next to this is because of the pipes that run down through here. So these are negative air pipe pressure tubes, as you can see. And that's actually got to stop on it, probably because I had something in here before. Uh, let's go and show this into the other. Oops, I don't want to do that either. The only one that actually really works for that is the logistics configurator. That's the safest one for the doors. So now let's go and put this stack of this stuff into here. And that should run through there fairly nicely. It'll fill up, first of all, this. And this is actually much better these days. We're not getting anywhere near so much lag. This should have plenty of pressure in it. Um, Shall we see what pressure it's got in here? 4.91 bar, exactly. Which is enough to make this go through fairly quickly. And what's my frame rate like? It's, yeah, it's just about 30 frames per second on this one. So that should come in here. And as you can hear, it's working away. It doesn't look, you can't see it yet, but there we go. So now it's coming out here. So we now have our first um, 48 wheat flour. Fantastic. And there should be some more in there. There must be a whole, whole couple of stacks because that should make three stacks of uh, flour dough. There we go. That's a second stack of that. So now all we need to do is to craft this up with a bucket of yeast extract. And then we should have some sour bread. Let's take a bucket of biodiesel in here. I've got a bucket of water in here. Let's put the bucket of water into this tank here. I don't think it'll disappear into here because this is full. I've not got any sugar in there, so that's one problem. Let's take out this and then go and craft our first sourdough bread. Talking about food, uh, I've actually also upgraded mystical agriculture. We'll have a look at that in a second. So we put this here, and then we put eight of these around here. So let's just take half of that. And then we get eight sourdough. And the uses of this, we can cook it to make uh, sour bread. And the sour bread, as you can see, has got f almost four food plus one, two, three. I think that's seven saturation. Let's compare that to bread. So that's three and so it's almost it's, well nearly double but not quite certainly double in saturation uh, which is fantastic so great food now the other one's going to have a look at was apples wasn't I Mr. Grand coach has got these apples in them now so we've got standard up a golden apple an enchanted golden apple which is actually what two plus one two three four and a half saturation and then in inferior apple Prudentium apple, um, a tertium apple, which is very good, six and six by the looks of it. Um, Imperium apple, which looks like that's six plus one, two, hard to count them up as seven and a half by the looks of it. Supremium is 12 plus, and I can't see it because it's got under the DX Tory line. And this is the recipe for them, by the way, is for a golden apple with four. And uh, a supreme essence around it, and the last one's the, this one. You've got 16 plus nine food bars, I think. And that is again is a golden apple. In fact, the Imperium they're all golden apples. There's a lot of gold in this, but um, if you look at the difference between a standard golden apple, which is actually this one isn't as good, it's like one extra food but it doesn't take that long before it gets much better so tertium is better it's double isn't it yeah or even more so there we go food and i've got a new recipe so we can actually cook that up and eat that um 
In fact, I think my food's actually not going through very much of else to get these made. So some sour bread. And I can eat this up. Now we should be able to get a reasonable amount of saturation. Like that. Full health and saturation is way up. So there we are. That's it for this episode. Everything from to make biodiesel plus uh, some sour bread. So next time I'm going to start to automate this with maybe drones and certainly definitely logistics. So until then, I wish you all the best. Bye for now.